Starting things off on Garden. All right. Locked in. Or interesting heroes here for T Superstar Wave. I don't think these will be real. At least not all of them. Fielder shows the okay. uh the uh the, road jump, the, yeah, the, the, the the other Australian one that's not jump crap. <laughs> um so yeah, we're actually running it as a support now instead of having Alpha E and having a support uh, flex over uh, to something else. So they're actually running it the most meta Overwatch League style here with the Solo Mercy support and the Orisa. Yeah, the Orisa I think is honestly the strangest thing. It's just for the extra ease of grab for Fielder, who obviously isn't as experienced on the hog as Alpha E is. Speaking of Alpha E, he gets knocked down first. All right, well, all ready. Very strong start here for Sassen, finding that kill, but Essen goes in, takes Stan out of the mech. Gets CD, Jung Mac now, Oberochi, he is just putting the team on his back on this McCree right now. Doesn't find the headshot on a Stan one, but he's just one shot from dead, and Ritz is able to scoop it up, so Jisoo's on wave, despite losing Alpha Yi off the bat, will be able to push in. It's and very get this cap. It's very, very difficult to run Dive Tank, the Winston Diva, against this solo support with the Roadhog variation, especially when there's a McCree on the field because your tanks are going to get hooked in by the Hulk combo. And you're, you're going to lose your Winston, especially if he gets hul you know grabbed, halted in very quickly. Fielder is under attack here, but you can see how much he can sustain. They have to commit the pulse, and they still take forever to knock him down. They do manage to find the three kills, though, as Edison takes that shot to the face sauce and able to eliminate him before that dead eye can go off. So GC Boost on wave might just be giving up the point very rapidly. A little bit over 33% here going to be gained. As Foxes do gain control, we'll see how long they can maintain this. It's super important that Ace got that Pulse Bomb to connect because without it, he gets healed up by his Take a Breather and Daydream's left click healing on the Mercy. And the next thing you know, all the cooldowns have been burned for the Foxes and GC Busan Wave can turn the fight. Edison has more room to breathe, doesn't die to the Farah as we saw. Sashin's going to have this Barrage they can use to kind of gatekeep Alpha E and Edison out. So let's see if he can find an angle. Put on the side, looking for the shot there. Finds one on the MCD, but can't take him down. The barrage out from Sassen. Get rid of Ion. They follow up with the kill in on the fielder. No res. Mac will go down, but Sassen, he's feeling it tonight. Landing these rockets. Gets rid of Alpha E yet again. Now trying to pop Ritz out of that mech, but has to look to the side as the self destruct comes in, and he can't get far enough away. Will get popped. The boxes have gained control. So maintain it. They have gotten the advantage here, they've gotten the lead. As far as the percentage is concerned, Stan one is buying so much time. Like he ate the stun as well as all those left click shots there, pushed Edison back. Bought time here for Jungmac to get back onto the point. Stan one making a huge effort here to build that time, and that he is. Yeah, got knocked out of the mech, but he might just make it back in. The final tag will allow him to re mech. He stays alive. They can't kill off the baby diva. Now Ion going down fielder as well. Jisoo was on wave. Might have to swap up this composition with not much time remaining. Edison manages to find two, the knockout onto the mech, and Sassen going down, but the rest is available, and Sassen was able to trade him out before he died. Stan won with major plays. By the way, he's still in pilot form. He's still alive, 40%, and he wants to come back here as fast as possible, so not even going to jump off the side. Very much doing a, his team a massive favor. Yep. Ace misses the pulse here, which is unfortunate, but the Foxes are in a massive advantage in terms of position. Sashin coming down the bubble, gonna mitigate a bit. Now the Defense Matrix coming through, but it still drops far enough but for long enough for the Rockets to get in and take down Ion. A Fielder is dead as he swaps over onto that Zenyatta. Now it's gonna be 99% to 34. Jisoo Kusan Wave desperately needs to get the split. Sassen finishes off Alpha E, gets jumped, so has the Pharmacy here. Rolling through as they rejoin in on the point. Looking for the shots on the Daydream. Can't find him. With a rocket in the face of Brintz as Stan gets knocked out of the back. The self-destruct coming through. Will be body blocked by that bubble. So Ion denying that explosion. GC was on way of trying to get this flip. Tag back in. Stan is still buying time for his squad to rejoin. Finishes off for the moment. The flip comes through 34%. Box is still with an advantage, but now they need to get the retake. Yeah, and they've got a weird comp to fight against. Alpha E on the Genji here. Genji Tracer with the, uh, you know, weird lineup as well. The Zen and the Mercy for that on control. Pulse stick gonna come through. Junk back gonna die. Stand eliminated. Both supports on the side of boxes had gone down. Now they're looking for a stagger in onto Ace. We'll be able to finish them off. Decent boots on wave. They do stabilize. The scary part is that the Foxes have a primal rage available now, and if they can use that to force Sashin into position, uh, then he could he can get a good barrage off. 
There's not really an easy way to prevent Sashin from approaching because there's no long range hit scan on the side of TC Busan Wave. Only got the tracer, the projectiles of Alpha E not going to be consistent. And you have on the other side as well now the ace swap to Brigida to help deal with potentially Alpha E's Dragon Blade. So, good opportunity for the Foxes to retake. And since into the back, kind of build up for that pulse bomb. Still going to be a little over halfway to that. Jung Mac, primal rage pop. Looking for the hit here on Alpha E, trying to think of a lower. Function comes up, not going to do you much good against the Winston and Sauce. It does go down before you can use the Mirage. Now it's 95%. Jesus was on wave, trying to close things out. Ion below half, Alpha Yi. Dragon Blade coming through the transcend is now going to expire. Look at the slash, gets the reflection in, but he gets kicked in the face. MCD gets rid of the enemy Genji. Alpha Yi getting absolutely nothing with that blade. The Foxes still have to be the ones to get the flip coming through because it's 99 to 99%. Rejoined onto the point, Self Destruct gonna be going in from Prince, looking for the pick, but it can't make it back into the mech. It doesn't find anything with the Self Destruct. Super Song Wave still holding it. They push Foxes off of this point for a second. Then OT Bar is going to plummet, and they will be able to close things out on guard, and it's going down. No one can get in. 100 to 99, dangerously close here. But GC Pusan Wave managed to get the win on Garden. Very much a, a lot of Things went wrong for DC Busan Wave with their commitment of resources to the fight. They switched to a composition that's a little bit less than meta, the Genji Tracer, but the execution was better than what we saw from the boxes, despite Stand 1 buying so much time, despite MCD getting the kill there onto the Dragon Blade and Genji, which he keeps doing stuff like this. It's actually incredible how much we're seeing some of these Zenyatas survive well, Undyne, MCD. Some of the Zenyatas you don't think about being top tier Zenyatas in this league. Just having highlight reels for themselves. Not enough to flip the point back to their favor. But we will once again see TC Busan Wave running Runaway Dive. Even with the Lucio committed to completely here, that support changes that have been announced on the PTR obviously aren't live here, but Lucio has been seeing a bit of a comeback right now in Korea. And we will see Ace on the Widowmaker. Kind of a winning matchup, you'd have to say, in terms of the blind approach to neutral here for GC Busan Wave. Dive into the back there, Edison already going to be using that recall. As Chung Mac tries to sit right up in the front, but will get taken down as Alpha Yi comes up with killing blow. Edison already 70% just about on the way to that pulse bomb. Could just eliminate Chung Mac as he gets res back into the fight. <laughs> Alpha Yi here, just looking for any weakened targets. The you know, Pilot Diva, they're not really oh, all too mercy, interesting. He stays alive, actually. Pulse Bomb out for Medicine, not going to find anything. And Omorochi just jukes him out, doesn't go down. Now the Pulse comes in, finds a stick to Zazen, gets rid of Medicine. The cap still not coming through on either side. LP able to avenge his Tracer's death. Comes up with that kill, now going to be hounding down with Omorochi. Finishes them off. Doesn't want to mess with the Widowmaker, however. Just have to settle for knocking Stan out of this mech. But no attempt at a stagger. They want to get this cap rolling through. They want to get the percent climbing. So they just kill Stan off the bat. There's a, this is a pretty even spot in terms of ult economy right now. The Foxes can, with this switch of Ace onto the Brigida, get a fast retake here. As long as they can keep MCD alive to get a Transcendence in the longer fight, they have a really good shot at shutting down the Dragon Blade. Even with potentially a sound barrier and transcends to pair with it, I think they certainly have the tools with this Brigina now to take this quick. Here's the blade. Yeah, blade coming through. Alpha E dashing into the back, just slashing wildly, looking for any sort of target. Did not get the and stun. Finish off that deep up. Now into the corner has the backup coming through from Brits, and they will go ahead and just steamroll MCD into the ground. Yes, yeah, Sunway will maintain control. This is not the end of the world for the Foxes because they didn't really commit anything to this. It's yeah. not like it's like, oh god, they used their Brigida stun, so I guess they're not going to have that for the last fight. They didn't even get to use the Brigida stun uh, onto Alpha E there, which is why he was able to find so much success with the blade. They used the Valkyrie and that's it. They lost time, which is an important resource on control, but just trying to gain information as to where everyone is, is Edison. Maybe grab a stick onto Oberoji if possible. Tosses it in, they can clip the front of the shield there, but Ace yet still gonna get popped by the explosion. They pile in, looking for the res with Oberoji, but gonna get interrupted, cannot pull that one off. Now the Primal Rage in from Ion, trying to knock them into traffic. Jumps to the side, sees those healers all by themselves in the pocket, keeping MCD alive, and Oberoji not gonna go down either. Dive back through from Ion, he's quite low. He could fall with a Discord Orb thrown in. Managing to stay alive here for the moment, but desperately needs some heals. Some of the struggle is going to be used, but Ritz not able to make it back into the mech, and this could be a nice opportunity for the Foxes to get the flip. And some Alpha Yi goes flying off the side of the map. Daydream will die, the flip will come through. 87% gain for GC Boost on Wave, and they don't have any ultimates right now. 
killing the Brigida is nice if you want to utilize a follow-up Dragon Blade or a quick attack, but in this case, obviously, they weren't able to capitalize on it very much. Uh, and the uh, more longer, efficient fight goes to the Foxes. DC Busan Wave going to switch Fielder onto the Brigida themselves to try to have that counteracting power against Sashin, who's kind of been annoying on this Tracer with the flanks. Here's a Blade. Again, Ace is first to die. Gets rid of Ace, which means there's just really going to be any counter coming through for this Genji. Cuts down MCD. Oberochi has died. They'll get the pop out here. Stan going to have to be playing around traffic yet again. Recall comes through from Sasa and he tries to delay by himself, but he's dangerously low and will get taken out at the end. Fielder coming up with that kill. Flip coming back through. Only 39% gain for the Foxes. Now it's over 90 for GC Boost on Wave as he looked to close out Oasis. The Foxes need to play better around the Brigida to make sure that these Dragon Blades get shut down because if Brigida's not being pocketed and she gets, you know, worked out, down, once the Blade comes through, she dies first. There is no counter. They're going to have to rally in this fight. They're going to need Another it. Another stick coming through and they're not going to be able to rally, Wolf. Edison comes up with a double kill. Oberochi falling, and that should be all she wrote. Sound barrier just for good measure from the side of GC Boost on Wave. A self-destruct into the air from Stan. We'll make it back into the mech flying. Just a little bit more time, a couple of seconds. And Sasan will also tag in, but has to recall that OT bar is ticking away. He is going to die. 139 this time around. GC Busan able to get the victory on Oasis. They do take the first win. And the Foxes, you know, they tried. A lot of different ways to approach against GC Busan's multifaceted compositions, the Roadhog, the Genji Tracer, into their own Brigida there in the end for Fielder. So flexibility is the name of the game for GC Busan. You can feel the defensive play style that they've been working on, you know, says the coach, kind of coming through a little bit here for the squad. Let's see if this continues with Fielder on the Roadhog rather than Alpha Ye there. Running a composition they're very familiar with, but not with the player that's most famous for it. So as we move into hybrid, it's very likely, depending on the map, that we do see this again. There's a lot of GC Busan Wave fans here in the studio. Edison, I do feel, has shown a little bit more depth to his play as well. The Tracer was yep. not the greatest Tracer we've ever seen, but he looked very proficient on it, which is just another layer of strength to this hit scam player who's become quite famous when he's been given those highlight reels. I, I think one of the biggest things that you could sing praise about as far as his tracer is concerned was his, his pulse bomb sticks coming through, regularly targeting out the Brigida and eliminating her, which assisted in opening things up for Alpha E. We saw one that, you know, that last Dragon Blade wasn't the most necessary thing because he himself found the slash. Yeah. So it seems like boxes are a bit scattered in the fight. Uh, so they can't really find yeah. the targets to isolate, so you can't really locate the Genji because, I mean, Alpha is just all over the place. They're He's not, going in wildly. They're not, like, they're not very aware of where Alpha Yi and Edison are at any given time, which yeah. is why the Pulse Bombs continue to hit, even though Brigida can stun the Tracer who's pulsing her in that same range, essentially, minus, like, a few exceptions. Like, the pr Tracer throwing Pulse Bomb at max range against the Brigida is facing the opposite way or, like, tossing, like, above from a high ground or something like that. But otherwise, like, usually when a pulse is coming through or the attempted pulse comes through, you can stun the Tracer. If you know where she's coming from, it makes it a lot more difficult for the Tracer to get that stick off. Same for the Dragon Blades. They're not playing around the Brigida. The Brigida is not aware as to where these dive heroes are, it feels like. So they're running the right comp to counter this Tracer Genji. But the execution of that defense and the awareness of where these dive heroes are, I think, is what's lacking for the Foxes. So now we get ready to move into hybrid. We've only seen one map from the Foxes with their selection. As we take a look at a, a very, very nice uh, Sasin artwork here with the Farah. Yeah. But it was Nambani. The Nambani really small arm the, for some reason. Yeah, it's... Tiny one. I guess it's the idea like the pitcher's arm maybe, like the rocket arm is maybe the left <laughs> arm here, and then the, I mean, because obviously they're wearing baseball uniforms, so. Possibly. But, uh. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I was trying to, no, like, no, no, I was going to say, uh, so Nambani is the only map that we've seen from Foxes as far as hybrid. They picked it versus O2 Ardient. They picked it versus Element Mystic. The Element Mystic one, you think back, that was the, that was the Willy Wonka. They held them inside the point. They were able to take A. And then they almost never got out of the spawn because Element Mystic just parked up with the Torbjorn, with the Orisa right on the cart and did not allow the Foxes to push out. Yeah. So do they try risking going to Nambani yet again? Or do they just try to play something different? I think trying to play Nambani against a team that's running their own dive quite well and actually winning it in the dive matchup 
uh, based on what we saw in game one, is incorrect to go to Numbani. However, I have a feeling that the Foxes plan to run Numbani because if you think about GC Busan Wave style and the Roadhog comps they've shown so much on Hybrid, it's a little bit weaker of a map for that until you get to point C. Uh, so they probably pre prepared for that, but based on that game one, I think sometimes you have to change the strategy. Yeah. Um, during this, this, what is very obviously a substitution, we don't know which player, uh, you can think about things like that. You can try to um, make different decisions. Like in Apex, we used to have something called Tactical Pause, where you would have one timeout, essentially, yeah. per series. And that's when the coach would come in, and that's usually where you'd say, okay, I know we planned on running Nubani, but like I noticed this. Like Let's actually let's go to King's Row, because I feel better about this, you know, stuff like that. Um, so there's, there's some time they have to sort of figure out now where they want to take us. But I think... Numbani is the plan, but it, based on what we've just seen, I worry for the Foxes if that's where they're going to try to make their stand. And we actually, as far as I can tell, do not have a substitution. We were just showing fan signs. Yeah, might have just been going through. Of course, we do have the, you know, the fan sign giveaway at the end of the broadcast. Yep. We choose a winner, so have to make some time for that. But yeah, seems like there's not going to be any alterations at all. Uh, King's Row. It's going to be King's Row, as you say. Okay, this is not a bad choice. Uh, you can run the Fara on this map against the Reinhardt Zarya compositions that we see. Sasha is going to love to do that. Um, and they've clearly been working on their Brigida, which is going to be quite critical as well. Let's see what GC Busan Wave wants to run. Are they going to run the Roadhog variation or the more meta Goat composition? Time will tell, but no swaps from the Foxes is definitely a, a change here for them. You know, normally after control, we would see some swaps coming through, because typically in the past they put uh, just on the starting roster for control, and then yeah. we would see Ace come in for hybrid, but now just going to be rolling through the series it would seem. And that's because, that's because clearly they wanted to run a little bit of Genji, Ace has been working on the Brigida, and... Then you, when you go into hybrid, you want to run that Genji on Nubani, especially where foxes like to go, put Ace in. Um, but in this case, he plays the Genji on control. Now, I was going to say, he's crazy if he thinks this comp is going to work against a standard Junkrat Orisa Hanzo variation. It is going to be the triple tank here. Ace, of course, operating with Brigida as a tank. Double support still in the mix. Solo DPS, Hanzo for tank busting. Very strong comp for King's Row, and there's a lot of combos you can use as long as you build that grab surge, as long as you can consistently keep yourself building ult charge. And the Sonic Arrow makes it easy to find an angle of approach. They go around the left side here. They oh. do have a small pause. Okay. Seems like we might have an issue. It's good. We cut away from the game sound, or else we were going to hear Orisa just spamming her left click for eternity. Forever. <laughs> but yeah, they find a way onto the point. And this means that the setup for the Foxes, on, or sorry, for GC Busan Wave on the defense is going to have to reposition. They're going to either have to give up the high ground there, come down to fight onto the point, or they're going to have to, uh, you know, bring the Junkrat into a position where he can flank and get damage. All the while, if they do approach that point A and take the fight directly to where the Foxes have the Reinhardt Zarya, okay. they're going to feed ult charge. So it's pretty win-win right now as to where GC Busan, or sorry, where Foxes are. Yeah, I mean, honestly, shifting down to that back left corner, as you can see on your screen here from Sasa's perspective, is probably where GC Busan would love to set up. That way they're away from the older worth, and it's uh, less flanking opportunity. They still have to drop down for now. Picking up onto the point is going to be the Foxes, nearly having that first one. Giving space for them to drop down, and already the first tick comes through. Stan operating up onto the high ground. High energy coming through. He tries to stay alive. Second tick gained for free. GC Busan may have to commit to something. Otherwise, they're just going to surrender this point straight up. Ritz goes in. They're trying to contest. Flies up in the air yet again. Ticking forward. Nearly having it. When will they drop down? The Orisa still just sitting here. Coming Finally now. managed to find a pick up there on an MCD. Maybe that'll be the encouragement that they need. Dragon Strike rolls through. Edison finds a shot onto Ace with the Storm Arrows. And it seems like now GC will be able to gain control, but... They gave up so much ground. 
And Fox has had it, you know, have a great say they'll pull all this. And Fox has have an excellent defense. That could have been enough for them to get a victory. They also got they gave a lot of ult charge to the tanks on the side of the boxes, plus the Brigida who's gonna be sitting at 67%. Very difficult to hold it now. You know, they bought a lot of time. Here comes the D-Matrix over for Ritz. There's waiting for the shield to be broken. Ripped higher, could buy some time. Good okay. angle. Okay, we'll take down Chung Mac. They're not gonna be the not gonna be able to follow up. Off the backside of that shadow, Rez will come back through, however. And the Graviton Surge just pulls them all straight in up front. Fielder using the Transcend is trying to keep them alive, but it's still going to be Edison and Ion going down. Ritz, likely getting knocked out of the mech, does have to self-destruct to buy some time and try to get back in, but actually won't even commit it. They know they've done no. goofs. They're going to have to surrender this, and Boxes, honestly, Get a pretty good push there on to A. Yeah, you could tell Ritz was trying to eat the Dragon Strike, but it wasn't going to happen. The Boxes took a two-pronged approach, then had Sashin flank from the side. When the reposition finally happened, he did massive damage. As Edison was trying his best to kind of shut that down, he failed. And the Boxes just take, you know, this, this angle on the left side, like I was talking about when the pause happened, and then sweep in on the right with their DPSs to kind of Fuck the team of DC does not wave in half. Jung Mac gonna get sprayed down, was just kind of stuck in such an awkward position with that Dragon Strike at his back. The barrier falls and they're able to take him out. So, flying some time here. Sasin will also go down. So good hold here in the archway now for DC Busan Wave. Ult's already used for the Foxes, slowly building up now. Alfie sticking with this Junkrat. And I think once they end up using their last few ults here in just a moment, we will see a comp switch. Press coming through here on Edison, but he's still just getting burned down in, in the sky. Stan, flipping around the corner, able to eliminate him. And that 90 plus energy rolling through it. It is just gonna be a slaughter. Foxes, just take them out. And now start charging forward with the payload. Still three minutes remaining. Way too aggressive from GC Bruce on wave. It was a bit too risky for Daydream to try to get that res. Edison goes right back down. Now they get a lot of free ground gain. Yeah, I mean, honestly, G Super on Wave, I think they really need to, they're relying a lot on this Rip Tire, and it's a fantastic ultimate, probably the strongest ultimate in the game right now. So difficult to counterplay, and it can do a lot. Here it comes, but after this, I think it's time to switch comps. It's hovering it. Wants to guarantee the shot. Hasn't been hit yet, only has a couple seconds. He charges it in, we'll be able to take out Stan. The res you would expect from Oberochi to come through as they can just get him behind the corner, perhaps. They are not going to switch this up. They're going to keep with this. This Winston is going to be so difficult to do anything against the comp of the Foxes. Like, you're never, ever, ever, ever going to dive in. Grab comes up. Yeah, it's going to be Ritz and Alpha. going to be locked into this one. The Dragon Strike getting rid of the Junk Rat and answering Dragon Strike. Medicine finds Stan, but it's still going to be Foxes massively out. Trading GC Boost on Wave as they're still just three members alive. The Primal Rage burned by Ion. But he is still likely to fall, so he will be able to jump back over to safety. It's gonna Overwatch. Be a while before they can go ahead and top him up. And now 320 for the final push. Overwatch is not a rock, paper, scissors game by any means, but when you're trying to run this composition, the Winston Diva into the Reinhardt Zarya, just because you have a Junkrat, just because you have ultimates, you are going to come up empty a lot of the time. And in this case, we've seen this so many times. In this case, they do come up empty, they do get destroyed. Winston tries to get on the high ground, gets caught into the grab. So much damage coming out from that Dragon Strike. Foxes have a massive time bank now. Only now does GC Busan make the switch here. But I think they could have had a much better time by had they been willing to change earlier. Yeah. A good snatch up there onto the kill uh, for Edison as he gets rid of Sassen. So also just denies the armor away as the rally was used by Ace. That's a Dragon Strike. We'll see if he can set it up. Drops onto the low ground, tosses this one through, but everybody just splits. You can see Jung Mac still dangerously far forward, however, those get isolated yet again by the Hanzo ult and will get taken down. Now it's going to be cleanup duty for the Sun Wave as they push forward. Good hook get coming through, and they will eliminate Sasin in the end with that Sonic Arrow. So it's the variation with Alpha Yi onto the Roadhog again this time, rather than running Brigida, because they know that, you know, if they position their Reinhardt well enough, the hooks can be good, and there won't be stun. Ion is going to be free uh, as long as he's out of stun range from the Brigida, out of range of Ace to shield bash here. Awesome. Ult's ready to roll. Doesn't have a grab for quite some time, so honestly might just want to toss this one out. And Ion, he's just going to get taken down the shift, coming out of Ace. Then it's just to find the kill. Hook, however, on a stand will shut him down, delaying that Graviton Surge even further as Alpha Yi rejoins in onto the point. 
the Shatter coming down. Jung Mac, everyone from spilling forward, takes out that Roadhog. They get Ritz out of the Mac, and now Adrian's gonna go down. Sound Sauce and finding the shot with the Storm Arrows. They turn around, they find Edison, they get rid of him. Now they're rounding the final corner, still with a minute and 25 on the clock. Sasha is looking for the finish. Sasha wants to go into the spawn here with this Dragon Strike. He's got a vision with the Sonic Arrow. Here it comes. Also sit down, but it's going to be... Oh, no. I thought it was eaten for just a second, just but still this manages time. to get it. Almost had that dead Ritz, but it's not going to be that costly here for the side of GC Busan Wave, regardless. Kills coming through. Valkyrie up into the air for Daydream. Keeping everybody topped up. Ion, his barrier going low. Jungmax still going to be very healthy as he tries to set up for this Earth Shatter, but can just hold it for the moment because the Foxes are kiting back. Fielder makes the switch over to the Ana. Again, popular in Overwatch League in situations like this as well right now because of the heal denies. Limits what Brigida can do with her passive as well as obviously your supports. Okay, Graviton is going to be the way to close this out. 35 seconds. It's going to be the transcendence rolling comes. through. Graviton search is going to be tossed in straight in onto the cart. And Ion's going to go down to Earth Shatter. Not going to find anything to sell the struck rolling through. Alpha Yi pooped off the side. He will fall. Edison only scraping back one kill as Oparochi will die. But he dies. A Dream and Fielder. Everyone goes down and boxes. Will be able to complete this push here on the King's Row with time in the bank. Very much important that they get it with the time in case we you know, do go to those extra rounds. The uh, the way hybrid works, of course, with the overtime is you don't get a push. So let's see now what Jisoo Busan wants to run on attack. I think their inability to quickly identify that the Junkrat ultimate and the Winston play that they were looking for there as they were trying to contest B, they were unable to identify this was not the comp they needed, and they were just being inefficient from then on until they made the switch to the tanks where they did make their last stand. They did burn down the majority of the boxes. Extra time bank that was 230 plus at that moment towards C. And at the other side of things, I, I do really feel like we're seeing DC Busan try to play a little bit out of their comfort zone. They're trying to move away from what they've been showing us most of the season. They're playing a more defensive style. They're trying to improve the Junkrat play. But unfortunately, it just was not enough to stop the Foxes from C. This is still their game to win if they can get a good time bank. But we do have to point these, these small things out. Yeah, 19 seconds, all they were able to finish with. But getting the finish is the biggest thing. So Foxes do accomplish that here. And I think that might have been their first full push on Hybrid this season. Since uh, they started things off versus O2 Ardient. Well... GC Busan Wave is, for the very moment, showing Dive. A weird variation of which. Uh, it feels very Season 2 Apex, okay. but guess what? Foxes countered their comp if they're going to be running the real tank one here. If they're running this Genji, then it's pretty absurd. Let's see if this works. They're going to have a hard time. They're basically playing in an inferior tank comp. The Ana can be great here. If he can get a big biotic grenade, but otherwise the Genji is just not going to be very valuable versus a Brigida here. You're running a Genji into a Brigida yeah. in a mirror tank matchup. Well, right now, Jigmax pushing forward. Barrier being shattered, I do believe, there from Ion. Fire strike not going to get the connection. Defense Matrix able to eat that one up as Alpha e tries to poke in from the back. Right clicks from Stan still hitting him. But he's drawing attention from Jigmax, making him kind of flip and reposition. Good bio grenade onto Ace. He survives. Connect, but will not go down. They actually find the opening kill here onto Ion. Dawson coming up with that one, but Alpha dashes through, finds the kill. It's just going to be an exchange on some of these healers here as MCD goes down and as does Fielder. Stan building up nearly to a Graviton Surge. 20 more percent ready to go, and Sasin now has that Dragon Strike ready to roll as well. The scary thing, too, is the rally that's so close to being ready. It's going to make this Dragon Blade so difficult to use. They're going to have double support ultimates, though. We could see the Nano Blade. Very, very close to that opportunity here. Fox had to make their stand. Grab Surge, it gets the deflect. It's going to be Edison coming through. Dashes forward. Gets the kill. The Dragon Strike rolling in. And the Dragon Blade finds three for a second. Thought that he had bounced that one back in. Gave me the false hope. I thought we were going to see it. I was getting myself ready for it. Close call there. But it's going to be Edison's Graviton Surge. I'm baiting myself. You caught almost two of the things that, like, no caster can catch. <laughs> Diva eating I the know, Dragon I just, Strike I just, I, just, I, just big, I just big brain so hard 
on trying to out, like, guess what was going to happen, and then it just doesn't, but it's fine. Either way, it was still a good combo, and GC Basan Wave is able to come there, there, but four boxes end up with the ultimate defense where they have the armor and the ult advantages. Does not happen. Jigmac does get a shatter here. Yep. Sound barrier committed. I don't think he can shatter right now. Yeah, I need to hold it. His barrier. Oh, being missed ripped it. Apart. That's going to be the self destruct into the back side. Not going to find the pop. As MCD used that transcendence, and Ritz will go down. Sausage finding the hit there. Denying Ritz the remake. They push forward. Daydream. They can take him down. Pin coming through. Edison going to die. And Boxes should be able to re regain control over the card here for the moment. Two totally whipped shatters on both sides, but the fight goes the Fox's way as Fielder has another nano. Oh, that's going to be nice. They grab Sasha. They fail to do so. That Brigida burst heal plus armor comes through. Yep. Let's see if we can see a nano blade now. It's really tough again to use this against this composition that has a Brigida. He's up. He goes into the back. The Dragon Blade's going to be coming through. The Nano not going to be used yet, but honestly might not need it. Healed an eye in. Those take down Stan. Dragon Blade slices come in. Find Ace and Sasson. Jung Mac is able to answer the Genji, but it's a bit too late. He'll die. That's four members dead on the side of Foxes. I can appreciate... on can start moving forward finally. Yeah, I can appreciate Fielder holding this, but at the same time, you know, you build that so quickly in this meta that you probably could have had two Nano Boosts by now and have a third one shortly to be on the way. But when you don't need it, you don't need it. So they're just rolling into point B right now. On the side of the boxes, unfortunately, they just have not been able to shut down this Genji. It's so weird to me that Ace is just so unable to find these stuns. He has the right hero for the job, but the execution of the defense is weaker than the actual attack. As Alpha, every time you see that dash up, you know the blade is coming down. Meanwhile, Fielder is killing it on the Ana. Healing output, insane. Well, Graviton Surge ready to go. Sauston waiting with the Dragon Strike. That's going to be the grab straight in onto the corner. Just locking it all in. There's no transcendence available. And I hope you like Hanzo kills because Sauston's got a plethora of them. They'll push forward. They commit a lot Fielder. on this fight, however. Fielder, poor guy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So just let me jump off. It's not going to happen. He won't even get close. Ace wanted the kill. He's like, look, my KD's not very high on this map right now. Okay, but... <laughs> So they get the wipe, they buy some time, but Foxes committed almost everything that they That's had right. in the war chest. That's right, and Alpha Yi is walking up with 70% of a Dragon Blade. They do get the kill on Edison. That's going to stagger this a lot. So, ult advantage to GC Busan, positional advantage to Foxes, and I feel, in a lot of ways, the compositional advantage with this Brigida pick. They just have not been able to shut Alpha Yi down. He's about to go for his third blade now. This one might be the Nano. Keep saying, it feels like I am never going to use this wolf. Yeah. It's just for show, it's yeah. just for looks. Gonna bait us. Bio grenade. Here we go. Not really going to find much. That's going to be the nano in. He didn't have the blade ready to go, though. Finally Jumat crawls it out. Shatter, too. He's looking for the shots. Yeah, the shatter not going to connect. Alpha How many e kills? Two. How many kills is going to get? There's the stun. Two, it would seem. As he comes around the corner, looking to take down Ace. Three. Final <laughs> swipe there gets it. I'm talking about kills with the blade yeah, now. Yeah. But that's going to be the completion here on to B. God, it's just three minutes just about on the clock. It feels like Foxes are at a loss as to what to do here. I mean, this is as standard as it gets. Season two of Apex, these guys have all been playing since then. They've all seen this a thousand times. Like, this is a comp we'd see, you know, literally a year and a half ago. Sleep the on standard. the Chuck that's gonna be the Shatter coming through, locks up two. Yield and I instantly in a charge from downtown around the corner, find Sass and Ion, just pitting him to the wall. It's nasty, Squishing the man. life right out of him. Stan will have the grab ready to go. Foxes with just three ultimates here. Sausen close to a dragon strike. Needs it very rapidly to try to stop this push, but still has to be worried about the defense matrix potentially coming through. Stan. Okay, he doesn't have the arrow, though. He doesn't have the arrow. Down. Yeah, they're not going to have the combo, but they still get rid of the tanks. Ritz out of the mech as well. So a big time by coming through, but it's still two minutes on the clock here for GC Boost on Wave just in front of point C. Notice that if you go back and watch this VOD, you'll notice that uh, Sashin gave the Sonic Arrow right before that so that Stan1 knew he could toss it in because Ritz is, of course, still on the D.Va. So that was pretty cool. I think he was hoping to have the arrow there, but as you say, it was not needed. Fielder. Back forward, the boost coming down. That's going to delay it into the back. Alpha Yi looking for the shots. He's got everybody stacked up because of that Graviton surge out from Edison. Tries to get the hits in. On to Oparochi. He's got a sliver of HP left, as does MCD. They will go down. The res is just now coming through, but it's not going to be in time. A minute and 28 seconds on the clock for the finish. We're not over yet. 
this but was considerably more time in the bank here for GC Busan Wayne. It's a big flashback I'm getting, you know, the blast from the past of this was the style that Meta Athena, LW Blue, Runaway, and Lunatic Kai were using back in Season 2 of Apex. It was this style, this meta. Some of the same things that we saw back then, obviously, the shatter timings, you know, nano boosting the Genji. We haven't seen any counter sleep darts, no Jaehong moves just yet. It's only one Ana, and it's the Ana with the Genji here. Yeah. But we're seeing, obviously, GC Busan Wave, the difference being they have the Brigida, which is a counter that did not exist back then. And they're still getting crushed and dominated by these nano blades as Ace is just once again unaware of kind of where the blades are coming through, like where he needs to be. The protection is not there. So we just wanted to say hey real quick. Yeah. Um, but it is. It's just. It, it feels like we're living in what, like 2017 or you know early 2017 again. We're living in last year. And. Uh, that's just kind of, it's kind of cool to see the, the meta goes full circle. We will see Alpha Yi on this Roadhog. Time bank advantage obviously massively in favor of the uh, GC Busan Wave Squad. So obviously you want to play the safer defensive setup here. Yeah. Look at this, they're hiding. Oh, they're chilling out in the Alder Earth right now. Now pushing forward. Looking for the hook, hit coming through. Zarya Bubble helping to keep them alive for the moment, but Stan's still going to be going down in the end. As Ion is already halfway to that shatter, and Edison finds a great headshot there on an MCD. Storm Arrow's coming out. He'll go low, but he'll get topped right back up, and they are going for the camp right in front of the spawn with a great pin on the Junk Mac. Swap's coming through from the boxes. Over OG, over onto the Lucio, just to try to get them in onto the point, get them around this corner, and through this choke a bit faster. Yeah. Ion's oh, nearly got a shatter. Triple the old charge of Junk Mac right now. Look, Look at this in. hook. And that's going to be actually ace falling. Shatter oh, around the corner! Boy. Just locking them all in! Goodbye, good night! Pin kills two, Sassen out of the mech, Sassen going down. That's a pull that's hold. gonna be it, the pull hold comes through. They never even set foot on the point. Beautifully done. However, GC Busan Wave does not have a massive time bank. They do not have a big time bank. This could still be a draw, and that is what the Foxes will look for here. You have to imagine though, GC Busan Wave will run the Ana Genji again. On attack, Alpha Yi put on a clinic. It is breast, who are you, slash Hawksaw impression. And now where do you go as the Foxes? Do you try to counter the Genji and the like pseudo multi-tank? You know, it's not exactly, it's not the Goat Comp, it's not triple tank, it's tank Genji. It's old school Apex season two for King's Row. The players like Zumba, Hoon made a name for themselves on the Zarya. Kaiser's, I the Kaiser, this meta, right? Do you try to run the Orisa and Junkrat to deal with the Genji to peel? Like, as the defender sometimes in this meta, it feels bad because you have to guess what your opponent's comp is going to be as the attacker. As the defender, you're disadvantaged setting up because there's so many different ways to counter and there's so many different comps to run on attack in a very diverse meta. They will run that kind of same composition with Ace on the Brigida, so they're going to have no junk rat, but they will still have the stuns. They're going to have to do better though than they did previously against this. One Dragon Blade could end it all and GC Busan Waves got 120 seconds to make that happen. Start pushing forward now. Boxes. Taking the same comp already in onto the point. Looking good for the side of GC Boost on Waves. Fire Strike not going to find much. Taking the set up here on the Ion. The barrier comes up, but it's not going to be enough. They push for it. They managed to take him down. And now Foxes can play up around the choke here as they try to get Ritz knocked out of that mech. Great heal and eye, however, will stop them. If you, you compare them to kite back. If you can compare the defense of GC Boost on Wave, they were able to capitalize on this way more in terms of uh, Ryan ult charge though. Jumax only at 31, whereas previously we saw Ion at 67 after the defense, so just not able to get that much charge. Here comes the Ana. Nano's almost ready. They can just put it on the Ryan. Yes, the Huge bio! Not gonna find the hit, but he gets the bio grenade there on his Jungmax. He's gonna go low, maybe even down. Pocket coming through, managed to stay alive, but Ace cannot say the same. Spam coming out in onto the Ryan Harp, but the hit comes through from the Jungmax as he rejoins the fight and gets rid of Ion. Now it's gonna be the Nano boost in onto Edison. Graviton search has been used by Stamp. Gonna lock them all through here, but. 
still in onto the point halfway for that tick, but now they have the PO back. It's going to be Ritz getting knocked out of the mech and taken down. They're disadvantaged in terms of the Reinhardt ultimate, but they do have the attacking Zarya plus Dragon Blade. That's going to be the combo they're looking for. Unfortunate, the fielder had to use the Nano Boost to make it happen. But either way, this is still very much a good situation for DC Boost on one wave. But they only have one chance at this, or it's going to be a draw. Here comes a Dragon Strike. That's going to delay this significantly. Yeah, that's going to be straight down the channel here, looking for the hits. Shatter to take down Fielder with that Shatter hit. Now pin in onto Ritz. Finish off the Baby Diva that's actually doing him a bit of a favor. 25 seconds remaining. GC Boost on wave. They have the graph. They have this Dragon Blade ready to roll. They just need to hit the combo. Edison's hiding. My bad, I thought that Shatter totally whiffed, but I was wrong about that. I knew it hit the D.Va, but it hits Fielder as well. That delays this a lot. Okay, here we go. This is it. Grab has to be everything. If this fight goes on for too long, Stan might have his own Graviton search ready to go. They're going to toss this one out. The blade! Into the back with the MCD. He does have the transcendence, but it's not enough to keep him alive. Rich finds the kill on the Stan. Fielder going to be the only one who dies on the side of GC Busan. And they are just a couple percent away. They will be able to get it. An admirable defense. Overall, from the Foxes here on King's Row. But they cannot pull it off. They can't get the fuller hold. And GC Busan Wave will move up 2 0 in this series. We've gone back in time. We went back to the old King's Row. And what a great clinic. GC Busan Wave showcased of old meta is still viable if well executed here in this new meta where Azaria is so prevalent. You're not really. You're not really kind of going against the grind here. You're not bringing us back in time purely. You're just making an adjustment to the current meta. And it's working with Graviton Surge that make this, makes this happen. And when you've got uh, Zarya that can build that quickly, it works well. And that's all in the back of Fielder on this Ana. Yeah, wonderful. And this adjustment that they make is not like them copying old school styles. It's really just, it happens to be that running this Genji and Nano Boost with Ana for healed and eyes brings us back full circle, back to where we started, uh, you know, with some of our more famous teams that have, you know, now moved on to Overwatch League, Lunatikai becoming Soul Dynasty, and, uh, you know, Runaway, who finds himself still in this tournament, be a cool thing if we get to see, you know, some of Nano this. Nano Blades on the Hawk Soul. Yeah, that, you know, if this continues, this is, this is actually, like, to me, like a meta that I feel like personally kind of biased towards, I really enjoy it because it's um, during Apex season one, like I was playing the game a lot and you know, I wanted to cast Overwatch a lot. Uh, and I was still, I felt like spectating was like a challenge for me during Apex season one. I was learning the game a lot. But I feel like Apex season two was my favorite season because it was such an exciting season that was so, I, I felt finally comfortable watching the game. <laughs> So I feel great watching this again. It's nostalgic. All right. Well, Wolf's happy, but the box is not so much. They're going to be down 0-2. We'll see if they can bring it back or if we're just going to have another 3-1, 4-0 victory going over to the GC Plus on Wave. We're going to go to a big break. We'll see you guys in just a minute.